Okay, so let's talk about KB Lake. It's finally here. The two CPUs that you're going to be really interested in is the i5 7600K and the i7 7700K. It's going to be tough, bear with us. So the burning question is, do you upgrade from Skylake? Short answer or spoiler, no, you definitely don't. Right now, if you're on Skylake, just overclock your CPU by 100 or 200 megahertz, and trust me, you're there. It's really that bad. Um, it's not all doom and gloom, so I'm gonna be going from sort of good to bad, and I'm trying to keep it, you know, as unbiased as possible and trying to get all the facts to you so questions that are going to come up straight away i want to just get them tackled and dealt with temperature we had the rumors just like we have and all the other cpu launches that yes they overclock really well but you need a crazy amount of cooling to deal with them that's almost true in the sense that yes they are hotter Yes, they are difficult to tame, but they are not running above 100 degrees or anything to that effect until you start pushing crazy volts and running them at like 5.2, 5.3 gigahertz. Which, the overclocking side, it's really interesting this time around. We've not had uh, a set of CPUs that actually make the 5 gigahertz mark since back, um, I think it was Sandy Bridge was the starting point. Yes, we've had other CPUs that do hit the 5 giga mark, but they seem to be, you know, the really, really good ones. Whereas with KB Lake, it seems like the bulk, at least from my testing and speaking to others in the industry and then talking to consumers and different things, the, all the information I've got seems to back up the fact that they should all, um, you know, th there is a bit of a disclaimer with that, but the bulk, you know, the majority should hit above 5,000 megahertz or 5 gigahertz. And the voltage needed to do that will vary from one chip to the next, but 1.3 seems to be about the sweet spot. Now where the temperature issue comes from, I don't know exactly, um, you know, why this has happened. You know, we can look back, you know, with history, and the one that springs to mind is Devil's Canyon. That was meant to tackle and fix the temperature issues and... Mm, Kind of did. Um, we've had other CPUs in the past, like the 2700K, which sort of popped out of nowhere and made very little sense. If you know it was meant to be a little bit better, cherry picked. You know, Intel were a little bit more upfront with the fact that it was going to be an, a good overclocker, um, and that's what KB Lake really should have been. We should have just had a Skylake refresh or a new set of Skylake CPUs that were clocked a little bit higher. They had a few improvements, um, and in that sense, we could, we could have just said, let's not bother with Z270, but that is a big part of the jigsaw, which I'll come back to, because it does make sense. Um, you know, even as I make this video now, I've just finished up some reviews. I'm not massively excited by KV Lake, and you probably won't be either. So let's try and get back onto something a bit more positive. So let's say you're on Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, should you upgrade to KB? Well, it's more logical, the answer is going to be yes. But the issue really is, do you want to invest in a new CPU, a new motherboard and memory? Because if you're coming from older gen, you need DDR4 now. Well, when it was Skylake launch, I was quite hesitant and I said, Probably wait a bit because DDR4 pricing was really bad then. It's roller coastered since, and it's at an okayish point now. So, you know, picking up 16 or 32 gigs of DDR4 isn't going to break your bank anymore. That said, it may settle in a few weeks' time. So, it, it's not that bad compared to Skylake. You know, that's been out there for a while, DDR4 settled. So, in that sense, the upgrade performance that you'll get from a new board, a new CPU, and moving from DDR3 to DDR4, as an overall package, it should look quite appealing. Um, KB Lake, we've got the new GPU on there, which hmm, not everyone's going to use, but you know you can play 4K content natively now. It is a good product, but it's just it's a bit meh. That's you know the best way I can describe it. So yes, if you're an older tech, 
I would definitely say, you, you know, you're going to notice some notable gains. If you're on anything like Z87, 97, probably not. Um, I would consider sitting this one out and seeing what Intel's got in the future. Of course, you're going to be tempted to look at what uh, AMD have got, which was Zen, what is it now, Ryzen. Hopefully, that's going to shake up the market. So, let's talk about numbers and different things. Basically, as I said at the start of the video, we've had a bit of a jump in performance from the clock speed. Um, you know, the out of the box clock speed and the boost clocks have been turned up a bit. So they do deliver that five, 10, or depends on the app, somewhere between five and 10% performance increase over Skylake. And yes, obviously if you're a Skylake user, just don't bother, I, you know, I really can't justify saying that this is not great. That said, if you jumped into Skylake and you didn't invest in the higher end sort of care series and you didn't get a high end board, perhaps you just went to the basic stuff like the B170 or the H170 chipset, uh, if you had an i3 or something like that, then coming over to Z270 does bring some interesting sort of things to the table. You've got the dual M2 because M2 has really dominated the market. Um, SATA Express didn't work out. Yes, we've still got the NVMe products and U2 and all that sort of stuff, but M2 is at a sweet spot right now where there is notable gains over SSDs, so using them singly, you know, it is worthwhile. Um, so now we can couple those up and we can run them in RAID and we've got this interesting tech from Intel, which is uh, the Octane tech. So you've got that. Um, you know, there's new things on the boards in terms of how they look. Um, and that's a big part of it this time around. Lux is a huge, huge deal. Um, unfortunately, RGB is dominating much of uh, the new products. So if you're not an RGB fan, you're probably going to look at the new Z270 stuff and think, mm, not for me. If you do like lighting um, and visuals matter to you, then Z270 is without a doubt the best looking as a complete range. Uh, chipset launch that we've had for a while, the amount of choice that we've got in styles and colors and things. It's just a lot more interesting. Um, but I can feel myself going full circle, so let's try and get back on point about the processors. It is what it is, you know, we can't look at this launch and say, oh my god, what a surprise, what have Intel done? Because we've almost become used to this happening now. Um, as I said, 2500k days, they, you know, they were the turning point. Suddenly, we had these really interesting CPUs um, from the i5s and the i7s, and the really good overclockers. And then it's been a bit up and down. And you know, with the refresh or the second launch of any generation, we've come to expect that it'll be mm, okay. It would have been nice to see a little bit more. Um, you know, on paper, these processors do look pretty good in reality. You know, not so much. Um, coming back to that issue with temperatures and once you start overclocking them, um, you're gonna need some good cooling. And you know, it, it's early days and you know, what I found from my testing is that the biases are helping. There is a little bit sort of room to tweak between the stuff I've tested prior to launch and what's gonna hit the shelves. Things will be ironed out, um, but you do wanna invest, spend some time and really think about do you need the upgrade you know what you know what's it really going to grant you but for the most part i'll have to say just give it a miss you know or at least put it on the second in line sort of choice look at your other options first uh numbers and things it's all on the website i've done a, a pretty decent comparison i feel between z170 and z270 and then i've got the higher end stuff which is from x99 or when it comes to sort of uh, multi-threading and single-threaded apps, it's all on there. But you know, spoiler again, if you just want to know the short run of it, add five to ten percent to 6600k and 6700k, and those are your Gary Lake numbers. So um, it's been an interesting product, but it's been a bit. Hmm. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Will you be upgrading from Skylake? Are you on older gen? Are you waiting for prices to settle? Are you happy with the numbers? Let us know in the comments below. An interesting but slightly boring video today. Um, you know, we were all hoping for a little bit more, but those are the facts. It is what it is.